Hello, and thank you for clicking on this video. I'm Nate Mendel, co-founder and creative director of Oki. Today I'm going to be looking at a very quick walkthrough of mesh payments. I've used privacy in the past, privacy.com, where their focus is virtual cards, privacy.com. Very powerful if you want to control. So anyone who has run on low budgets knows the perils, the absolute annoyance of overdraft fees, for example, or any fees for that matter. So when you deal with traditional banks, they punish you for being poor, right? Logically, that never made sense to me. Oh, you're poor? You don't have money? You are overdrawn? Here, let me punish you. Let me continue to you know keep you poor. And psychologically... Uh, that's kind of how it works in the world. You know, the poor people end up spending more in certain areas because they're poor. And that's just one example of it. So privacy with virtual cards allows you to solve that by controlling subscriptions with individual cards. Mesh is essentially the same functionality, but it's geared for business. Okay, so their login system works with receiving a PIN. Uh, in fact, their entire application works in that manner. I find it to be a little redundant and annoying when you have to confirm every important action with another PIN. I'm just checking on my phone right now. Should receive an email. Hmm. Why am I not receiving the email? Usually it takes a second. All right, so I'm looking at my phone and no email has come through did not get the code. Let's try this again. Usually the email comes through right away. I guess it did come through right away. I just didn't see it on my phone for some reason. Lovely. Uh, 1915. It is pretty secure. Unless somebody's able to hack my email, they wouldn't be able to end they wouldn't be able to hack into the system, period. So it's pretty secure. So I just started testing it out. I started out by loading it. So one of the fundamental differences from when I remember using privacy is that privacy pulls from your bank, ACH. So you set up a card, a virtual card, and then privacy pulls from your bank account after a charge. Here they mitigate that factor by saying you have to load your balance first. So here I went ahead and loaded $175 and they put a limitation on how many cards you could use. In mesh they have a little bit, you know, they're, they're pretty controlling with regards to what they allow you to do in quantity. But their support is very responsive and very nice. I just requested to up it so they said to go to the next tier, I had to have, see over here it says 2 out of 15 used. Initially you're going to start with 2, period. If your expenses are over, I don't know, 750 bucks, or if you load more than 750 then you could up the cards, I think maybe to 10 or something like that. Um, I just request, and so I, I did load more balance, even though it's not showing yet. It takes, see I loaded... 500, 575, it takes two to three days to load. That is a little annoying. I'm not sure why it takes that long, but it is what it is. So the, the balance is loading, so I, I had reached out to them saying I want to increase in cards because I want to manage all of my subscriptions, each one with an individual card. So they went and gave me, and they asked me how many cards. I told them I need about 15. So it looks like they gave me 15. I haven't even checked it. That's what I just saw. So 
I'm logging in now for the, you know, for the first time since I reached out to them. Over here, you load your balance. You connect your bank account. Once you connect your bank account, it's pretty simple. Let's say I want to load 500 bucks. You go next. Click on the bank. Press next and confirm, and that's it. And uh, and and that order goes through. Um, and over here, you have the second. Oh, shut up. Google Assist. Here we have the second most important button: uh, generate card. So what kind of card? General purpose card for any business purpose or one-time user or a subscription payment for all services that you are currently using. So if I do subscription and let's say Google, so I have a Google subscription, right? And it charges me monthly. put a description on it how much is the budget and this is where the gold is so if Google charges me every month ten dollars I'm gonna put the budget to eleven dollars and I'm gonna set this per month and on budget violation that means if Google ever tries to charge me more than eleven dollars either send me an alert that they did so or decline the charge so I always choose decline the charge this is the purpose of me using virtual cards. I want f complete and full control. I never want to get an unexpected charge in my bank account, period. This is what this this allows you to do it. If and and this is set up for business, so you could add employees and you could assign ca assign cards to employees, very robust. I'm not using it on that capacity. Anyway, create subscription. This is what I was talking about the the text that they send out on every action, which I think is a little annoying and redundant. It, it should at least save a full session, but whatever, fine. They're very controlling, very security conscience, conscious. All right, so here's my card, right? So now I could go use this card. Now, obviously, I'm going to delete this card because I'm making a video about it. So I'm going to delete this card and not use it, but every card will have its, its unique number expiration and CVV and the usage $11 so now I'm gonna go on to Google to wherever that subscription and billing stuff is and I'm gonna put this card as the method of payment so if so two things are gonna happen one if they try to ever overcharge it'll get declined two if I don't have enough balance it won't get charged and I won't get overdrawn in the bank now, I know that banks, some of them have the option to not allow overdraft, but certain charges seem to slip through the cracks. By doing this, you're not allowing it. It's, you're adding a, another layer of protection. Over here, you could go to cards. Here, you have a list of your cards. So I set up one for Trello, DigitalOcean. I was testing it out. This is not fully set up. And you could... You could just continue to load in new cards. Granted, they gave you permission to have more cards for each subscription and maintain full control over it. Um, really simple, but really powerful if you need this type of control. Um, I would imagine it's even more so powerful if you're adding more members, more company members, and controlling their cards, their spend. Right? That's where it really gets robust. They even have an API, so there are companies that are using them on a higher level and high volumes that might be where they're making their money more than anything but um, on a very basic level yeah you know here you have your subscriptions you could detail your subscriptions the cards they relate to here you can manage the cards individually here you have your balances that's it they have great support they're usually on live chat whenever I answer them I have whenever I ask a question I, I get an answer within hours so I highly recommend it. Really cool.